Let's say that something is traveling at a constant rate of five meters per second. That's its velocity in one dimension. If it was negative, it would be moving to the left. If it's positive, it's moving to the right. And let's say that we, we care about what is our change in, what is our change in distance over, this, the delta symbol represents change, over a change in time of four seconds. over four seconds. And I could say from t equals zero to t is equal to four. That's our change in time. That's our four second interval that we care about. Well, one way to think about it is, well, a rate, a rate by definition is nothing but a change in some quantity, in this case it's distance, over, over a change in some other quantity. In this case, we're thinking about time. Or another way to think about it, if we multiply both, time, both sides times change in time, you get your change in distance is equal to your rate, is equal to your rate times change in time. Rate times change in time. And so this is very close to, you might remember from pre-algebra, distance is equal to rate times time. And that just comes from the definition of what a rate is. It's a change in one quantity with respect to another quantity. And so if you just apply this, if you say, okay, my rate is a constant five meters per second, and my delta t is, I'm, is four seconds, so times four seconds, well, that's just going to give you 20. That's just going to get you 20. Let me do that same color that I had for the, for the change in distance. That's going to be 20, and then the seconds cancel with seconds, 20. Meters. So my total change in distance over those four seconds is going to be 20 meters. Nothing new here, nothing too fancy. But what I want to do now is connect this to the area under the rate function over this time period. So let's graph that. Let's graph it. So that's my rate axis. This is my time axis. This is going to be in seconds. This is going to be in meters per second. So let's see, one. two, three, four, five, that seems about enough. And then I go one, two, three, four, five. Our rate, at least in this example, is a constant, is a constant five meters per second. It's a constant five meters per second. So that is my r of t in this example. And so what did we just do here? We just multiplied our change in time times our constant rate. We just multiplied our change in time So it was from time equals zero seconds to four seconds. So it's this length here, if we think of it on that axis. And we multiplied it times our constant rate. We multiplied it times this right over here. But if I multiply this base times this height, what am I going to get? I'm going to get the area under, I am going to get this area under the rate function. And that area is going to be 20. And if we went with the units of them, obviously you're, you're used to things of area being something you know, unit squared because it's usually you know, meters times meters or miles times miles or inches times inches. So it'd be inches squared, meters squared, or, 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 or miles squared. But here if we go with the units of the axes, it would be meters per second times seconds, which is going to get you meters. But the, the important thing here is that the units here, or the area here, is 20. So at least for that very simple example, it looks like the area under the rate curve is equal to the net change over that time period, where, where, we're ta where, where the rate is something with respect, where, where we're saying that the, the rate of something with respect to time. But let's test that a little more. Let's just get a little bit more uh, intuition here. Let's say that we had a different rate function. Let's say that, let me make it with a different, let's say instead we had a rate function I'll, I'll still use yellow. Let's say I have a rate function that is, let me make it a little bit interesting. Let's say it's one meter per second for time is greater than or equal, to, or zero is less than or equal to time, which is less than or equal to two seconds. And, and this is obviously, this is all in seconds where we're talking about time. And then it's two meters per second for t is greater than two seconds. So what's that going to look like? And actually. Try to graph it yourself and just say, well, what is the total change in distance over the first, let's say, five seconds? So we want to do delta t over not the first four seconds, but the first five seconds. Well, let's graph it. Let's graph it. So this is one meter per second. One meter per second, that is two meters per second. It's in meters per second. 
That's my rate axis. And, and this right over there is going to be my, that's going to be my time axis. One, they're obviously not at the same scale. Three, four, five. And what, is this, what does this rate function look like? Well, my rate is one meter per second between time is zero and two, including two seconds. And then the rate jumps. And this isn't that realistic. Nothing can accelerate instantly like this. You would need an infinite force or an infinitely small mass, I guess, to, well, maybe there's some things if we think about, well, anyway, I don't want to get too complex there, but it, it, this is unrealistic. <laughs> it's not typical for something to, to just have an instantaneous velocity increase like that. But let's just go with it. So, so then after the two seconds, we are at a constant, we are at a constant rate of two meters per second. Now what is our total change in distance over the first five seconds here? So here we care about the first five seconds. Well, we can break up the problem. We could say, well, over the first two seconds, change in time is two seconds, times our, we have a constant rate over those two seconds. So it's going to be two seconds times one meter per second. Well, that's going to be, that's going to give us two meters. So this here is going to be, actually, let me do that orange color. That's going to give us two meters there. And then we look at the next section. Our change in time here is three seconds. And then we multiply that times our constant two meters per second. That's going to give us an area of six. And if we look at the units, in both cases, we're multiplying seconds times meters per second, which is going to give us meters. So it's going to be two plus six meters, or eight meters. So hopefully this is giving you the intuition that the area under the rate curve or the rate function is going to give you our total net change in whatever that rate thing was, was, was finding the rate of. In this case, it is distance per unit time. If you, if you take the area under the rate function, that, that kind of distance per this, this speed or this velocity function over some period of time, that area is going to be our total net change in distance.